Welcome quest heads and any member of the VR horde that are out there. So I've had an idea. I've noticed that whether it's a VR channel or it's not a VR channel, people seem to review a game and then basically you never see it on their channel ever again. So I thought I'd start a series on what's changed in games, especially ones that I have looked at on the channel before. This way, in case you haven't played them for a while or you've just not been paying attention, you might find something new here that'll bring you back to a game that you really used to enjoy playing a lot. If you think this is a good idea for a series, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you all think. Just before we get started, I covered new game releases coming up on Quest and PC VR and other up-to-date news not too long ago, and you can check that out right here. Apart from that let's go game on first up the always enjoyable battle talent for the oculus quest they put back all their physics based climbing which they took out earlier before i released a review of the game they've got all that physics climbing back they've introduced a proper parkour system and on top of that modding is now allowed and the dev has released a mod toolkit with instructions and you can find links to all of that stuff down below in the description so anyone who wants to can start making mods for battle talent which is something that we don't see a lot on the quest when it comes to mod so that's great to see. Now all of these parkour and physics based climbings have been added into the procedurally generated dungeon so don't worry there is a parkour tutorial as well so you won't be caught off guard when you find these sections. There's rope swinging, wall climbing, a whole bunch of stuff and it's really awesome. The bots and the combat system have been tweaked a bit as well. Nothing crazy just to make everything a little nicer, a little smoother because at the end of the day that's what this game is all about. AMXR is now on App Lab so congrats to to the dev on that i know it wasn't the easiest process for him so it's great to see that also means no more downloading an update from side quest of amxr every week when it comes to patches fixes or adding extra stuff into the game which is great the biggest update for amxr since i reviewed it is that there are new maps now you've got frontier which is a cowboy style map in a little western town arena which is very much like og containers from pavlov arena is a big area with the same texture on everything but honestly i dig it the standout map for me is gallery it is huge multi-leveled very detailed very fun for shootouts finally there's blizzard as well which is basically just sandball which came with the original game but it's just a bit whiter <laughs> All in all, these maps are great additions to the game because the game already has the combat down. It's super fun. The guns feel great, but you want to take those to new locations and now you can. Ever wanted to kill a giant with a giant pencil? Hard Bullet has got a big update to its beta physics version as well in the Steam menu if you have the game. Well, they've added an enemy workshop where you can dress and resize enemy NPCs, dwarfs or giants. You can have it all. I'll get to the giant pencil in just a second because now there's an ammo workshop as well which lets you create custom ammo like in the other version of the game. So if you want a shotgun that fires kettlebells, you're in luck. Or a machine gun that fires pitchforks, you're in luck. And yes, this is where you make the giant pencil. There's also been an update for the grab distance and general UI. There's also now a tutorial sequence as well. I think half of the fun here is figuring out by yourself what does what and how it works, but I get it. And it's nice to see that this beta version you get with the game gets improvements regularly as the physics are not only on the NPCs and objects, they're on the guns as well, and it makes them so fun. We are talking Boneworks level of physics for everything here. Game bonus! The Museum of Other Realities is free on Steam right now and it's really worth your time. I went round for a little bit with someone from my Discord and we had a great time and believe me, for me especially, art galleries aren't exactly my thing. But this is really awesome. You'll be confused, you'll be happy, sad, you'll get freaked out, learn things and experience a lot and a wave of other emotions as well. Now it's free due to a special collaborative virtual showcase. It's called the XR3 Virtual Showcase and it's coming in two parts. The first one is coming from June 9th to the 20th of June 2021 and the second part will be coming July 6th to July 17th 2021. So in between these dates I couldn't tell you whether the game will be paid again or not because originally the game does cost money but it's been free whilst this showcase has been on so I assume it will be paid again in the middle but not for the other parts of the showcase. So with the virtual showcase there's more than 55 virtual reality experiences with hand-picked selections of works from some of the most acclaimed VR creators and studios in the world. 
I can't say, like I said, that art type museums are my thing. I normally go where the old guns and the old swords are, but this is a really fun experience and even more so with friends. You can definitely meet up with your friends, people on your friends list here. That's exactly what I did. And don't worry, there is a built in camera feature with this app as well. So you can capture all the cool stuff that you see. Okay, back to game updates. Dr. Beef's Doom 3 version for the Oculus Quest has seen some updates as well, including two-handed weapon mode. So no more flashlights always in one hand and any other gun in the other hand, like you just fire off a chain gun holding it one-handed in your left hand with no recoil. Now you can use your off hand to hold weapons at the same time, which is really great. Firing the BFG or the chain gun with two hands is so much more satisfying. They've also taken a look at the recent PSVR, release of Doom 3 and they've added some things that are similar for example the shotgun they have tweaked a bit more to be like the PSVR version in kind of sound and things like that. The team have also supplied links to what I assume is their favorite choice for more HD textures that you can find for the game. You can find a link for that in the description below and that link will take you to all the other links that you need to download you know their best recommendation for HD textures for the game. Now there's plenty of HD texture packs out there for this game right now for the Quest version but I would say play it safe and go with what Dr. Beef and his team recommend. There's been some other tweaks as well to the full IK tracking and things like that as well, but two-handed guns and the HD texture pack are definitely the standout updates since I reviewed it. Now the awesome Crisis Brigade 2 finally has its multiplayer, which adds a whole new level to the game. The biggest problem though is you can't talk. That's right, it's multiplayer that's only with one other person in a game full of shootouts and you can't talk. It's like zero caliber on the PC or something. It's awkward. Now, I will say when I last checked, there was no ability to talk to anyone if you joined a server with someone else, but that was about a month ago. I checked the game literally today multiple times, but I couldn't find anyone to play with. I just kept joining empty lobby after empty server after empty server after empty lobby. So you you may be able to talk now also maybe not from what I've seen on the reviews and comments I don't think you still can talk to the person that you're playing with the only thing I can say is you know party up with a friend and you'll be fine for talking but it's definitely a bit of a lax judgment on the developers part but I think they just wanted to get the multiplayer out there as fast as they could because people were crying out for it and I was definitely one of them as well but if you feel like shooting around with a silent partner they've got you covered Zero Caliber on the PC has received an update blog from the devs finally after quite some time of them saying nothing about this version of the game. They're speaking about all the things that they're working on for the game right now, including new grabbing and weapon handling systems to make things more intuitive and smooth, proper melee combat. Right now you can hit people with grenades, you can hit them with weapons, but they're gonna introduce being able to get your fists out. Fists only run of the entire game, anyone? They're also introducing a few extra accessibility features like crouching and jumping buttons like they have on the Quest version for those who don't want to play physically or they can't. This is going to make using cover a lot easier as well. Climbing won't be as cumbersome as it is now. That's their words, not mine. So things will get easier when it comes to climbing stuff, which is great because they're not wrong it is a bit of a pain at the moment. They also say they're likely to implement different holster placements and options to set your holsters manually, which would be great, because right now it's an absolute pain in the bum. You can put your weapons on your side hip holsters only. So if you have an assault rifle, it goes on your side holster, pistol side holster, and then nothing else. You can't put your third weapon anywhere. It's a massive pain and you can't move your holsters, whereas the Quest version, put it on your chest and you've also got the hip holsters as well. So. I think basically what they're doing here is they've neglected the PC version because they're trying to get the Quest version out. Now the Quest version is out. Hopefully they're pushing harder on the PC version to get it up to scratch and thank goodness because it certainly needs it. The potential of it on PC is even more exciting than the one on Quest, even though Quest is amazing. Unfortunately though, there's no time scale for this update. They've just said they're working on it and gave a few examples and videos of showing that. So we're not really sure how long that's gonna take, I'm afraid. 
Now I can't talk about Zero Calibre without talking about Zero Calibre Reloaded and finally Zero Calibre Reloaded has basically got its Quest 2 upgrade pack which I'm sure a lot of people are very happy about. They've significantly improved the textures giving over 700 megabytes worth of extra textures for the Quest 2 and believe me that does bump things up. Some Quest games are only 700 megabytes completely or less. On the Quest 2 as well they've also improved explosion effects, bullet casings and are shiny and don't look like nerf bullets but they have done things for both systems as well for example the loadout ui screen has been completely changed and is a lot easier and a lot more visually nice to look at they've improved the difficulty settings they've improved ai behavior they've improved ai animations they've improved climbing and more but it doesn't stop there all you southpaws out there now have the option to pick what thumbstick does what so if you're left-handed you're good to play zero caliber reload absolutely comfortably. They also gave the civilian NPCs masks as well which I think is just a bit of brilliance. They fixed a bunch of co-op stuff as well like when you're playing a co-op game with someone and their hands would be over the other side of a level to you but they would have their hands normally to them. And just as I finish making this very video, Zero Caliber Reloaded comes out with another massive update. They've improved bullet impact effects. Weapons now have different muzzle flashes. They've reworked all the foliage, changed the inspection map to a nighttime map. They've improved the character textures on the Quest 2 only. They've improved the NPC animations. A lot of the AI behavior has been improved. The enemy's whole cover system is now much better. They've increased the veteran difficulty because we are all just too badass. They've improved the Combat, they've improved the climbing, they've added the ability to manually adjust your ammo and holster positions, and it sounds like someone has been playing Aim XR, am I right? They've added more sounds and in-game music, and the list goes on. It's great to see all these fixes so quickly after release and they've been listening to people's feedback which is great. Now we just need this treatment for the PC version. Oh, uh, there's so much more that they've done with Zero Calibre Reloaded. Links to the patch notes will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing down below as well because I've got plenty more PC VR and Oculus Quest content. I'm here to make content for the entire VR horde that's out there and I'm happy to do it. My name is Rex. This is Eyes on VR. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Game on.